Live from ClickOrlando.com, this is News 6 at 5.30. This is a News 6 Plus takeover. Here now is Lisa Bell and Candace Campos with Florida Foodie. Hello and welcome back to Florida Foodie. I'm your host, Lisa Bell. Today's guests got their start after spending years working in retail. The loss of a job and the desire for a good New York style bagel led them to an unplanned business. Their bagels became a hit with a couple selling them right out of their home at one point. So we are very happy to be joined today by Jeff and Danielle Pereira from Jeff's Bagel Run. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. This is so exciting. It's very exciting. Thank you for having us. Yeah. So I mentioned you used to both work in retail. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your background. What were you doing before you were making dozens of bagels every day? Um, all right. So I started my career. I graduated from the University of Florida um, and started working at Target in their leadership development program. So I was in, basically an assistant manager equivalent. Um, worked my way up through the company. You know, a lot of leadership focus at Target. Uh, was a store manager. And then I worked in the field in a food operations role and then in an uh, overall operations role. So logistics focused for about 50 stores. So I did that for about eight years and then got recruited to work at Ross stores. So Ross Dress for Less. Um, I was a district manager with them. So I managed um, upwards of 16 locations for the company, um, both in South Florida and up in the Orlando market. So that's my career, mostly retail leadership, um, operational focus. I'm definitely very passionate about efficiency and processes. So um, translated a lot to the bagel business, which you wouldn't think, but I think that's a big part of some of our success is that operational background. And Jeff, your background? Not entirely different. Um, Danielle and I actually met at Tarbit years after, so I'm a little bit older than she is. So how do you go from places like that to making bagels and being successful business, bagel business owners? So (laughs) you can, you can, you'll tell a story better than me. So you can tell. (sighs) All right. So in August of 2019, I was laid off. I was working in senior living. I'd been recruited away from retail and was it was great. I was home a lot more. Uh, it was a really good job, but I was the low man on the totem pole, so to speak. And um, I was like, oh. And I stayed home with the kids. So Danielle ended up going back to work. She had been home with the children. And, um, <laughs> uh, you know, she's like, why don't you just take a break? You know, stay home and I'll go back to work. And I did that. It was awesome. It was the first time I hadn't worked in, I don't know, 30 something years. It was pretty wonderful. And um, we had some overlap. And she said, you know, why don't you make me a bagel? Just at home one day, you were just sitting in the living room? We were driving to Winter Park uh-huh. to get bagels. So I, you don't realize when you're just like picking up bagels in like your normal life, like how often you're near a good bagel shop. And I was out in Lake Mary and I was in Winter Park for the job that I was in. And I would just grab a dozen from our favorite bagel shop out there and bring them home. We'd freeze them and then suddenly the freezer stash ran out. We had no bagels. So we were both home. We had that overlap when neither of us were working. And we were driving to Winter Park 45 minutes to get bagels. And we're like, this is silly. Like, there's no bagel shop on our side of town. So she said, why don't you make me one? Yeah. Ultimately, I was like, (laughs) just wanted him to stay busy, not get depressed, not... Right. I mean, being laid off is, you know, obviously it's now after COVID, many people have experienced this. But I think Mm -hmm. for him at this point in his life, it was like a shock. Kind of traumatic. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure that he just maintained a good sense of worth or like, yeah. and I was like, all right. And I also truthfully did not think it would last. I thought it would be something that he would try and be like, whatever, didn't work out, he'd go <laughs> play golf. Like I, it was, I don't know, on a whim, I guess. And then, but I did keep feeding your, your sort of obsession. So well, I, I had but better. So you guys always liked bagels. Obsessed. Like I, okay. it's my favorite food. I'm from New York as a kid. I was a very picky eater, but I loved bagels. My mom would like, every Saturday we'd go to the bagel shop. She'd hand me like a plain bagel in the backseat of the car. Very like core memory for me. (laughs) And I've always looked to replicate this in my adult life. Yes. We lived in South Florida. It was a better bagels, but Uh I wanted like that experience very special yes. to me. So, and did you have any connection to like a New York style bagel? Did I mean, you- who doesn't love a bagel? And right. I mean, I don't trust those people. So <laughs> I think I always loved a bagel as part of my breakfast. And Danielle's, Danielle's <laughs> passion, we'll say, for bagels definitely has rubbed off on me over uh-huh. the years. And I mean, we would, as part of our travels, wherever we would yes. go, we would try to find great bagels. Like whether we were in a new city or somewhere, we'd say, hey, where's a great bagel shop? And we would go enjoy that together. And it was something we did. And so when she said, you should make me a bagel, it didn't seem odd. It just uh-huh. seemed like 
something okay. that felt right. Okay. So I decided to try to make it. And I'm. How I, was that first bagel? Ugh. Awful. Oh, terrible. awful. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I mean, I. You have to like. We should rewind. Like I never bake anything prior to starting bagels that didn't uh -huh. come out of a box. So cakes from boxes, brownies from boxes, take and break cookies. Like I didn't bake. Like I had no baking experience whatsoever. No formal training. So did you training. just Google how to make a bagel? Like, yeah, the okay. internet and lots of books, reading. Like it's amazing the amount of tutorials that are available to learn how to bake mm -hmm. in general. And then um, the bagel process was just about recipe testing. You know, and I watched plenty of Food Network and seen lots of other people making food. And so I just, you know, I just did what I thought I should do. So I just started making different batches with slightly altered ingredients. Danielle would come home and say, this is horrible. This is better. This needs more salt. And I would take her feedback and I would make slight adjustments. And I mean, you should have seen the counters. It was like just glass and plastic and metal bowls full of different doughs with all the ingredients written on the paper on top. So when you were doing that, were you thinking maybe I'll sell these or were you just thinking, wow, I just want to make my wife happy? No, this was definitely make my wife happy. There okay. was no, in yeah. my mind, yeah. there was, I did not think we would be selling bagels. It was just, you know, she said, make me a bagel. I said, of course, let's go. Okay. And yeah, and he is, he got obsessed, which was great. And I was like, all right, let's keep going. You know, we're, <laughs> I was like, again, my end goal was to have a great bagel. And that was it. So I was like, keep going. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. She went off to yeah. work one day. Yeah. And I set out to start, you know, my test batches for the day. I don't know, three or four dozen that day. And she came home and I said, this is the one. I've got it. And she's like, I've heard this before. Yeah, like so <laughs> <You> many <know>? <laughs> times. <laughs> wasting so many calories on these terrible bagels. <laughs> <laughs> but I handed it to her like pretty fresh from the oven. And she bit into it. And her eyes rolled back in her head. And she's like, this is it. I'm a kid. I'm in my mom's yeah. Volvo. Wow. And yeah. I'm eating a bagel from my bagel shop in Long Island. Yeah. And I was like transported. It was, it was like I just got goosebumps, but it was pretty special. Yeah. Yeah. It was like it worked. So of course I started doing it again. I made them again and again and again, like days in a row making the same bagel. And she told me that I have to go to work every day. I can't like, I have to fit in the work clothes that, <laughs> <Yes>. I, <laughs> that yeah. I'm required to wear. Yeah, so like, if, like, and if there's a bagel on my counter in, I've eaten a whole meal. I will eat that bagel also because that's like how much I love like bagels or they're my kryptonite. I mean, I don't know how else to say it, but yeah. so I was like, you got to get these out of the house. Like I can't eat two bagels after I've eaten dinner. Like that is not a good choice. <laughs> so we started giving them away to friends and yeah. family and those friends and family came back to us after I wasn't making as many because I figured out how to many to make and we started freezing them and doing stuff. And they said, you know, we buy these from you. And I was like, no, but no one's going to buy bagels from me. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> You're going to buy bagels from me. Um, and I said, okay, sure, you can buy some bagels. And so I sold some to some friends and then they asked for them again. And I said, you know, Danielle, maybe we should try to sell them. You know, this was probably now November, December of 2019. So only a few months had gone by. It was a very accelerated few months. Yeah. I mean, I was making five, yeah. six dozen bagels a day for practicing. So it was a, it was a lot of yeah. energy put yeah. into it. But by December of 2019, we were selling bagels on the internet, which is wow. crazy yeah, to we, say. Like, I mean, and I think... Because of our backgrounds, we had enough insight to know, okay, let's build let's build a Facebook page, let's build an Instagram, let's build a website. Like this is like the just the right. basic stuff yep. to have. So people are like, who are these people? Yes. And so we knew to do that. Yeah. And I think from there, once we had that, it was, you know, kind of legitimized us, I guess. Then four months later, the pandemic hit, followed by lockdowns and flower shortages. Stay with us as we talk with the couple behind Jeff's Bagel Run about how they thrived in the midst of the turmoil, eventually opening two stores. Welcome back to Florida Foodie. We have been talking with the couple behind Jeff's Bagel Run about how a request for a homemade bagel quickly turned into a big business. Then, like so many other businesses, they were forced to push through the pandemic. March of 2020, and it was actually we were at, it was our anniversary. We'd gone yeah. out to dinner, and she was working at Ross Dress for Less, and they had a big meeting plan, like this huge conference in Vegas where thousands of people, tens of thousands yeah. of people were gonna come from all over the country to come to this meeting. And she gets text messages. They just start coming in. Her phone doesn't stop going off at, while we're at dinner that conference is being canceled, like something big's happening, don't know anything. But like, yeah. obviously the beginning of March was starting to get scary. And, um, you know, she, <laughs> Danielle immediately goes, we need to stock up on bagel supplies. And I'm yeah, like, I don't know, something in my brain. I knew we were going to close. Like I had just had, 
enough insight and experience and you knew that ross was gonna close yeah Yeah. Yeah. so she knew something like ahead of time so we weren't telling people that but you just you know because of my position i had a lot of insight and information and so i just said okay like we need everything. We need flour. Plan B. B yeah. I mean, bagel. And I also didn't know yes. if I'd have a job. Yes. I mean, I had just started in October. I'd worked for them before. I'd come back. But mm-hmm. I didn't know. What if they said, you know, we're going to let people go? And and I think that really motivated us to scale within mm-hmm. our home. I mean, scale is relative, right? If we look at what we're doing now compared to what we're doing yeah. then, it's yeah. much bigger. But And I think, and I, we just stocked up. We got a bigger mixer. We stocked up on flour and just, like, buckled down and said, all right, like, how do we make sure we can... And survive nothing. in the pandemic and i right. honestly jokingly was like you know what like we can just trade bagels for like toilet paper. Goods, yes! toilet paper, like, yeah i was thinking not survival i wasn't thinking about money i wasn't thinking about yes. like the finances just more like what if we can't get food like which yeah we can survive on bagels yeah. we've got you know 1500 pounds bagels. of flour yeah. and, uh, like, medicine. Things like flour were yeah. kind of hard to find flour was <laughs> flour was difficult yeah. we went through multiple suppliers during the pandemic um multiple different types yeah. of flour like or brands but like yeah. still the same like really high gluten high protein flours yeah. but we you know in the beginning of march we had i don't know maybe 20 dozen bagels a week we were like selling to people randomly they'd send us a message on facebook or instagram and say hey i'd love to buy some bagels mm-hmm. i mean i was driving four bagels to a sweet old woman in claremont every week because she just wanted four bagels like i mean that's how small this business mm-hmm. was and then everyone scrolled a little bit deeper because they were home after like, you know, the stay home orders set in and next thing you know, we're getting hundreds of messages. Like yeah. inconceivable amounts of people wanting to order bagels from us. And we're suddenly booked six weeks out every day, seven days a week, baking dozens and dozens of bagels. And we had to change something. So I'd been some friends along the way, which I think is a, the coolest part about this story is the people we've met, the community that we've been building and you know, associating ourselves with and becoming a part of. Um, and I called him and I said, I need to move everything online. Like the ordering everything. And he's like, I've been waiting for this phone call. I knew you would. He's like, I got you. And he sent me like six text messages with exactly what we needed to do to build this website that was going to allow us to create an online ordering system and make it a little bit more kind of like a democratized environment to get because people were just like, DMing you yeah. like hey to the I tune of like bagel. 300 yeah. messages yeah all coming in at the same time because we did like a bagel drop so we would mm-hmm. we would release inventory like it was a concert ticket or like yeah. the newest like sneaker sneaker yeah. or album like with a very limited quantity and so we'd get you know two 300 messages all at the same time it was like the demand was just too high yeah. so um as we kind of marched into May of 2020 um, the world started to open up a little bit in Florida, at least. <laughs> we um, we got an opportunity to do a pop-up event, which was the first live in-person event that we did. And I don't know if it was people were tired of being home after two months, but mm-hmm. we had like a line of like 150 people to wow. buy like 30 dozen bagels. And we immediately limited it to like six bagels per person. We yeah. knew we had to make something happen. And there were so many people still in line after we sold out of bagels that... We took everyone's name and email address and we emailed them like a special link so they could order bagels. So we didn't know. Like we yeah. were like, and then people are like, when are you coming to do the next market? When are these happening? We started getting invites to different markets. And, um, and I was coaching, you know, my daughter's soccer team and I wasn't available on Saturday mornings to do a farmer's market. Like, what do you, like, I can't do that. Like I got to coach my soccer team. <laughs> so we really held off a lot of stuff until the fall. And then the fall of 2020, we started doing some markets um, and demand was really high. Like there was just yeah. always a line. Every time we had, you know, 40, 50 dozen bagels was the most we could make for a Saturday market. And we'd sell out in under an hour. Wow. Um, it was wild. And I think it was probably February or March. I can't remember exactly. I think it was February of 2021. We did a market and they were going to cancel it because the weather was awful. It was like about to thunderstorm something crazy like the other vendors were packing up we had a line of people they'd been standing there for an hour to get bagels like i mean they were already there before we get there they would show up before we got there they're waiting in the rain they're ready to go and we sell like the first like six or eight customers and the sky just opens up like complete downpour danielle's like protect the bagels <laughs> cover the bagels everyone is getting soaked we are unbeknownst to us we were like at the apex of where the parking lot drained. So we're standing in about a foot of water. Our customers are getting drenched. There was a woman in line 
um, who'd come from Winter Park, who was like, I'm not getting out of line. She bought an umbrella from the person in front of her. It was true. <laughs> it was like, yeah. It was crazy. Um, and we sold every bagel that day. And everyone stood in line and got soaking wet. And we kept the bagels dry. And they left. And um, we got home and we, we said, we have a business. Like, yeah. we... This is a business. We can do something yeah. with yeah. this. And Maybe we should. I started to see that as a path of out of retail, out of managing this so is many my exit people. Plan. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, it took me. It took a lot of convincing. And I think it was after that market. She's like, okay, well, maybe we should look and see if there's like a commercial space or you can find a place that you could use as a commissary and like ghost kitchen from, and mm -hmm. you can expand and we can take it slow. I don't. You know, slow. I don't go slow. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, so we had started looking for places and spaces yeah. and um, a couple fell through. Well, and it seems like after the pandemic, more retail spaces opened up. There were some. Yeah, there were definitely. I mean, the space we are in now is definitely was a yeah. kind of like a casualty of COVID. It was a former restaurant that mm -hmm. just, you know, when people started staying home and there wasn't as much foot traffic in the plaza, the business kind of hard to mm -hmm. operate yeah. and so like they had to close and we got you know we're fortunate we moved into a second gen kitchen that was you know pretty ready yeah. for ready to go for us i mean if you th like we've grown so much in a year i mean people have found out about us i mean just yeah we were maybe selling 40 dozen bagels a day 60 yeah. tops and now you're at what level today's 80 for a wednesday 80, so on the yeah. weekends we're maxing out 120 124 yeah. like so we're yeah we're running out of time okay. but i do have some yeah. other very sure. important questions how do you make a bagel <laughs> flour <laughs> okay yeast malt salt and water okay that's it and then we can actually see part of the process when you come into your store. I yeah, was in, in there the and you had dough and you were cutting it and yep. you were yeah. like rolling it and making it into the shape of a bagel. Absolutely. Once the dough yeah. is, once the ingredients are made and the dough ball is uh -huh. created, the we then cut and scale. Um, we cut and weigh each piece of yeah. dough so that it's a more uniform. Yeah. And then we shape it we roll it you out you seem like you just knew how much you needed so as you were oh, cutting yeah. them into it's it's all weight pieces. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we it's, like a, it's a like a certain number of grams per bagel yeah i mean i think rough estimate is somewhere like north of three hundred thousand bagels that we've cut and rolled right now yeah um yeah. that's just in the shop that doesn't include stuff we did at home yeah. for yeah. a year and a half before we yeah. what is the most popular flavor of bagel okay everything plain is everything number one? Everything and then plain. Those are the two. And then Asiago, everything's really popular, and rosemary salt. Well, to the point that when I was there, there was also a man who came into your store asking for a T-shirt that said Jeff's Bagel Run. <laughs> so you're selling yeah. merchandise, too? Yeah, yeah. You got merch, got merch, too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, yeah it's, awesome. it's really become something that I don't think we ever thought it would be. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we set out just to make a delicious bagel and make people happy. And, you know, when we were delivering bagels to people's house at the you know, during the pandemic, you know, saying hi to people from yes. the porch, you know, six, yeah. 12 feet away, whatever it was, for some of those people it was the only contact that they had all day, all mm -hmm. week. Yeah. And, um, you know, whether it was me or Danielle or my father helped us with deliveries. And, you know, there's, there's some montage video somewhere of someone's ring doorbell with my yeah. father delivering bagels during the <laughs> pandemic. It's yeah. awesome. But I think that that joy that those bagels brought to people in a time that was, yeah. you know, And we've gotten a joyless. lot of messages about how we've inspired people to like start their own business or take what they like what they love and and passion and make that into a business i think that's some of those like other additional things that we didn't expect there have happened and continue to happen and we're really proud of that that's awesome yeah real quickly where yeah. can people find you online and on social media at jeff's bagel run everywhere yeah like okay. literally everywhere instagram if, instagram facebook, facebook twitter TikTok. TikTok. We're not on YouTube. No. That's the someday. only place we're now. Maybe yeah. one day. But definitely TikTok is, Jeff does a really fun job at making TikTok content. And, <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, he's definitely interesting when people are like, I saw you on my For You page. And we're like, what? So that's awesome. I think that, that's been really fun. Yeah. Well, Jeff and Danielle Pereira from Jeff's Bagel Run, thank you so much for joining us today on Florida Foodie. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. If you liked what you saw here, you can see more on News 6 Plus. And while you're there, also check out Florida's Fourth Estate. I was on nine episodes of The Walking Dead in their prime mm. seasons. Riff on this and live cams. Hundreds of people sit down just to enjoy the beach from home, overlook the city beautiful, or watch the cruise ships come in. It's all available free on News 6 Plus.